Hey friends, welcome to Let's Draw a Drawing. If you're like me and you find yourself at loose ends sometimes, my suggestion is pick up a pencil, grab yourself some paper, and let's draw a drawing. I'm Kay, with me is my whiskey swilling friend and pen sommelier, Joe. Hey everybody, I'm here just to, you know, moral support and clean up and keep the pens in order. Yeah, you, you, when you have as many pens as I do, you definitely need to uh, emphasize organizational skills. And let's get started with our latest installment, which is Handerfly. Tell us about Handerfly. Handerfly is a uh, prince who has been changed uh, a sixteenth of the way into a man by the hat, and he can no longer wear his crown. And in this, we you have your mythology playing out. You have... Use a certain color palette every time? I try to pick a color palette where the colors are harmonious and they complement each other. And there's not too many of them. It's not monochromatic, but it's not overly bright and busy. Then you test it all out beforehand to see how they play with each other? Yeah, and also just to make sure one of these magic markers that I've owned for like the last 10 years hasn't completely dried out. Uh, how many pens do you kind of like narrow it down to? I would say that there's never more than 15 pens and each, there's like maybe five of each sort of color range. How many overall pens do you have? I don't even know. Would it's you it's say a sickness. 50? Sure. Okay. And right now you, what movie are you watching? When I like to color in, I like to watch uh, old movies primarily because they uh, did a lot of explaining. They did a lot of uh, telling and not showing. So it would be like, what are you doing with that gun? Put it down. Oh, you shot me. Whereas modern day movies are, they require a lot more of the audience. And what were we watching? That was Rear Window by Alfred Hitchcock with Jimmy Stewart and Grace Kelly. And it uh, follows the exploits of a war photographer who had come back home after the war and who was now a photographer for a news company. And he has a hot girlfriend who's a fashionista and he breaks his leg and he's forced to stay inside his apartment. And then he sort of voyeuristically watches everybody in his apartment building. And I think it's a metaphor for Hitchcock and his weird voyeurism, but whatever. So what you don't see is me stopping and watching what's going on. Mm. There's actually segments where nothing happens on the video because I'm intently watching Jimmy Stewart, like, almost get killed. So do you use, use markers? You use, I'm seeing pencils? I use a, a combination. Um, it goes back to when I used to design tattoos, uh, the people that like really colorful tattoos, um, but they also wanted really clean, smooth color changes. So uh, the way I did that was I used a mixture of water-based colored pencil and alcohol-based magic markers. And so that you could then blend using the alcohol-based magic marker. And it causes it to be very, very smooth and also very uh, saturated. Tell me about your character creation. Like, how did you come up with Handerfly and the villain in the hat? It's mainly just a conflict. So I think there's got to be a conflict and there's got to be a good guy and a bad guy. And sometimes you don't even know which is which. Handerfly has fangs, you know, and uh, the hat is kind of cute. Who's the bad guy here? Did Handerfly bite the hat or did the hat mess with the Handerfly? It, there's always a conflict, but you're not entirely sure who the good guy and the bad guy is. If you spend a lot of time with your subconscious, and I do because I like to sleep a lot, the conduit between your hand and your subconscious becomes larger, a <laughs> bigger bore. And so, you know, it, it's kind of, it goes back to the surrealists, automatic writing and drawing where this is more like automatic suggestion. So as I'm drawing, I'll finish one character and then I'll be like, okay, what's the next one subconscious? Feed me something. And I'll be like, okay, how about a uh, rabbit with a third eye who's being pulled out of a hat by a bottle of poison? Uh, and in that bottle of poison, there is a flower, and his third eye is completely closed. That's why he has the Band-Aid over it. You know, yeah, it's hard to keep track. You know, I mean, you're going to repeat yourself because you're drawing from your subconscious. Har, har, literally. Yeah. Like, if you don't think about it too hard, your pen just kind of roams around and 
draws an ant that's, you know, got pink antlers and a second set of eyes, why not? As we near, like, the end of any piece, like, this is when you really start to, like, tighten everything up and every piece of negative space gets filled in almost, like, definitely with almost, like, flash tattoo art. It's very quick, small pieces that kind of repeat themselves. Yeah, it's it's like a lexicon of mm-hmm. imagery. We can kind of see the corner of another one right here. Yeah, sometimes I can't remember what I use for the fill-in pieces. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, there's, like... A rain cloud with a lightning bolt coming out of it, and a hypodermic needle, and a tooth, and a skull, and a, you know, a pair of binoculars, and just like random things. <laughs> and I forget that, you know, because sometimes if if I didn't remind myself, it would just be like beer bottle, beer bottle, beer bottle. And I, I dig it, and I dig it. Okay, thanks for joining us for Let's Draw a Drawing. Remember, if you find yourself bored and at odds, nothing to do. Find yourself a pen and a piece of paper. And let's draw. Just draw.